Ladies and gentlemen, the opening ceremony will take place in three minutes' time. Can you please take your seats?
Your Excellency, Mr. Nobuteru Ishihara, Minister for the Environment of Japan, my colleagues, Vice Chairs of the IPCC, my colleagues, Dr. Chris Field and Dr. Vicente Barros, Co-Chairs of Working Group 2 of the IPCC, my colleague, Secretary of the IPCC, Dr. Renate Christ, authors of the Working Group 2 report, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to this 38th session of the IPCC. It's a great privilege for us to be holding this important session in the beautiful city of Yokohama and served by these modern facilities. We are indeed privileged to have His Excellency Mr. Ishihara with us on this occasion. And I would like to express my gratitude at the outset for the enormous support that we have received from him, his ministry, and all his officials. We are totally overwhelmed with the warm hospitality and care that we've been provided by the ministry and others associated with this session in Japan. Japan has always been deeply supportive of the IPCC, and we value the enormous contributions made by the government and the scientific community of this country, which has been very active in every single assessment that has been produced by the IPCC. We are also very grateful to the government for hosting the Task Force on National Greenhouse Gas Inventories, which has done very valuable work on behalf of the IPCC over the years, ably co-chaired by my Japanese colleague, Mr. Taka Hirashi. My gratitude and that of all my colleagues is also due to the Institute of Global Environmental Strategies, its chairman, Professor Hamanaka, and its president, Mr. Mori, for the support they've been providing to this TFI and to the IPCC in general. This session is of enormous value, and I expect that after the successful launch of the Working Group 1 report in Stockholm last September, this Working Group 2 report will now enhance our understanding of issues related to impacts, vulnerability, and adaptation in the field of climate change. Of particular significance is the detailed assessment of regional aspects, which will give us a much clearer understanding of impacts in the past and those projected in the future for different regions, ranging from the African continent to Central and South America, the polar regions, the small islands, and the op open oceans. Essentially, adaptation measures are centered on local impacts and vulnerability and local institutional responses. By providing substantial regional information, this report would equip not only national and subnational governments with an understanding of how and in what manner to adapt to the impacts of climate change, but also make it possible to go right down to the local level in providing a basis for decisions and initiatives on adaptation. The chapters on urban as well as rural areas respectively would provide information which the diversity of go governance systems in rural versus urban areas would be able to absorb appropriately in arriving at solutions and actions to deal with different impacts of climate change. Overall, the management of risk related to climate change impacts would be the dominant approach emerging from this assessment. There would also be a much needed focus on climate resi resilient pathways that would explore the framework for combining of adaptation, mitigation, and sustainable development interactions. We believe that these features would enhance the policy relevance of this working group two assessment and would be of high value in the development of the synthesis report due to be completed at the end of October this year. The IPCC, Your Excellency, has a very busy agenda in the coming months, with the Working Group 3 report to be completed next month, and then the final effort to complete the synthesis report, which is designed to be of direct value to policymakers and a non-specialist audience by distilling and synthesizing information and knowledge from all the reports produced in the fifth assessment cycle. The regional aspects of the assessment in this Working Group 2 report would also be very valuable in providing structured, coherence, coherent and policy-relevant scientific details that would help the negotiating community 
in interpreting the applicability of Article 2 of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Since the understanding of dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system is the foundation on which Article 2 of the Convention has to be defined, much of the material contained in this report would flow into the understanding of this complex issue. The timing and contents of the AR5 ensure that under the UNFCCC, there would be adequate attention given to the findings brought out by the IPCC for facilitating an appropriate conclusion to the current round of negotiations under the Convention. Given the importance of this session and the crucial need for coming up with a robust, intelligible, and practically useful summary for policymakers, may I request the delegations to provide their wisdom and understanding in the process of approval of this report. Management of the time of this session in an efficient manner would ensure balance and adequate attention to every section of the report. The facilities of this excellent convention center would provide an atmosphere conducive to productive and smooth conduct of our session. I have personally attended many events at this complex and I'm speaking from extensive personal experience. And I have, of course, lost count of the number of times I have visited Japan for various professional reasons, but I estimate it would be somewhere in the region of 150 times. <laughs> I wish all those participating in the sessions of this meeting do enjoy their stay as much as I have enjoyed mine on the occasions in the past. Thank you very much. May I now request His Excellency the Minister to give us the benefit of his statement. Thank you, Chairman. Kankyo Daijin no Ishihara Nobutero desu. Kakkok Seifu narabi ni Pachauri IPCC Gichou o hajime to suru kokusai kikan. So shite Daigoji Hyoka Hokok Shou no shippitsu ni tazusa waratta kenkyu shara no minasama o koko nippon no横浜に私は昨年の夏にツバルフィージー今年1月にパラオを訪ねさせていただきましたツバルでは平均海抜が2メートルもないことに大変驚愕いたしましたまた海面上昇が生じているリ島や満潮時に浸水をした市街地 この現状も見てまいりました。私自身気候変動の影響を目の当たりにいたしまして、気候変動の影響は大変なことだと改めて実感をしたところでもございます。我が国におきましても昨年夏は観測史上最高気温を記録するなど。摩訳や豪雨度重なる台風さらに先月でございますけれどもこの温暖な横浜でも30年ぶりとなります28センチの積雪を2度も観測するなど各地で大きな被害が発生もいたしました このような状況を踏まえ我が国がこれまでアジア太平洋地域で気候変動の適用の取り組みを推進してまいりましたこの経験を踏まえ世界各国の気候変動への適用の推進のためユネップが提唱し私も名誉議長を務める世界適用ネ
我が国においても気候変動の影響評価に関する報告書を来年2月をマクトに取りまとめます気候変動への適用について来年夏に政府全体の適用計画を策定いたしますもちろん温室効果ガスを削減する緩和策もしっかりと行ってまいります COP21 で決定予定の2020年以降の新たな国際枠組みの構築に向けて、国際交渉で日本はリーダーシップを発揮いたします。また、昨年発表した攻めの地球温暖化外交戦略の推進などを通じて、我が国の優れた環境技術で、世界全体の排出量の大幅削減に貢献してまいりたいと考えております。国内では、再生可能エネルギーの最大限の導入を進めるとともに、徹底した省エネルギー社会の構築するために、先導的な低炭素技術の開発、導入、普及を強力に推進してまいります。また、明日、日本から世界に向けて、国民一丸となった気候変動対策を発信する新たなキャンペーンを官民で立ち上げさせていただきます地球に優しいライフスタイルの実践を広げてまいりますさて2020年東京でのオリンピック・パラリンピック大会の開催が決まりました徹底した環境配慮を行うことにより大会そのものを環境オリンピックにしたいと考えておりますそして大会を契機として首都の東京の低炭素化を行い環境都市東京を実現してまいります私たち日本人は四季の移ろいとともに美しく変化する風景山や海の幸などをもたらす自然とともに生きることで独自の自然観を育んでまいりましたここ横浜も実は今日にも桜が咲く予想となっておりますが総会が終わる頃にはちょうど見頃になっていると思います今から200年前に著名な俳人の小林一茶という俳人がこのような俳句を読んでおります。花の影赤の影赤他人は中里蹴り一茶は春らんまんと咲き誇る桜の下でたくさんの人たちが思い思いに花見を楽しんでいる様子をこの句に読んだわけであります。同じ花見を楽しんでいる人に全く他人はいない太古の昔より人類は自然と共生して生きています気候変動によってそのつながりが断ち切られようともしているわけであります私たち政策決定者は気候変動問題に対してこれまでの政策をただ続けるだけでは限界があり、政策を変革することが必要であるということを認識していかなければならないと思います。本総会及び作業部会で有意義な議論が行われ、世界全体の気候変動対策の進展につながる報告書がまとめられますことを。期待しているところでございますご清聴ありがとうございました Thank you your excellency we now have a set of recorded messages which could be played before I turn to speeches from this、uh, podium
Excellency Mr. Nobuteru Ishihara, Minister of Environment of Japan, Dr. Pachauri, Chairman of the IPCC, Drs. Field and Barosh, Co-Chairs of Working Group 2, Mr. Achim Steiner, the Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Programme, Ms. Christiana Figueres, Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC, Ms. Renate Christ, the Secretary of the IPCC, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the WMO, one of the two co-sponsoring organizations of the IPCC, I wish to welcome you to this session of Working Group 2. You have before you the important task to approve and accept one of the critical parts of the IPCC's fifth assessment report, one deals that deals with impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability. There is no doubt that this report, as all the products of the IPCC, will contribute enormously to the understanding of climate change and to the development of mitigation and adaptation policies. The intergovernmental nature of the IPCC, the formal process of approval of its reports by the member states of the UN, give to it a UN unique credibility and provide the strongest basis for policy makers to make their decisions. This has been confirmed again and again by the UNFCCC, the main mechanism for negotiating global action on climate change. With every assessment cycle, confidence increases in the science and in the ability of scientists to better understand human influence on the climate system and how climate change, in turn, impacts human activities. This report confirms that without urgent and ambitious action to reduce emissions over the coming decades, climate change will have increasingly serious impacts on society. Only six months have passed since the successful launch of the report of Working Group 1. That report has responded to the high expectations and already contributed a great deal to the deepening of the understanding of the physical science basis of climate change. I am pleased to note that its dissemination, first of all to the 19th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the UNFCCC in Warsaw last year, is having very high resonance around the globe. I am confident that the report of Working Group 2 will be as equally effective in disseminating the assessments on impacts, vulnerability, exposure, future risks and potential benefits for adaptation and also in making this critical information accessible to all. This report is the product of years of intensive work and I want to pay my special respect to the commitment and dedication of thousands of scientists who have made it possible to reach the stage of approval. You have worked tirelessly and without any compensation than the pride of participating in a historic undertaking that has tremendous impact on the way climate change is understood and addressed. I am grateful also to the WMO members who continue to believe in and support the activities of the IPCC and to UNEP for its critical contribution to the success of the IPCC. There are elements in the report that are of particular interest to WMO and its programs, in particular how climate impacts are expected to vary from region to region and to evolve over the coming decades. This will provide invaluable guidance on how we can reduce climate vulnerabilities and adapt to the consequences of greenhouse gas emissions. The next step is to operationalize some of the climate research assessed by the IPCC by transforming it into practical and actionable information. Working together, national hydrological and meteorological services and other organizations working at national, regional and global level will deliver increasingly sophisticated decision support services aimed at building climate resilience, adapting to new conditions and mitigating certain emissions. This is what the United Nations system's aims is to achieve through the Global Framework for Climate Services. The challenges are enormous. 
some 70 countries in the world, especially in Africa, are lacking the resources and the expertise to deliver and even to use climate information. You have in your midst some permanent representative of some of these countries in this meeting. However, enormous are also the opportunities and the benefits climate services can render to strengthen our climate resilience. WMO is committed to disseminating the IPCC's assessments as widely as is possible at all levels of policy making, among other partners and within the wider public. WMO is proud for what the IPCC stands for and what it has delivered over the 25 years since its establishment as a partner. And we will continue to support it into the future with resources and in particular to ensure its unique contribution to this very important aspect of understanding the Earth system into the future. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, from Nairobi we join you with our best wishes on the occasion of the 10th meeting of Working Group 2 on Climate Change Impacts, Vulnerability and Adaptation. As you set out to prepare the summary for policymakers, we want to join you once again by commending you for the extraordinary efforts that you have undertaken this fifth cycle of the IPCC and also to express our strong commitment and support to the work that you have continued to take forward throughout the years, over 25 years by now, and sometimes also through some heavy weather. The IPCC Working Group 1 report, released a few months ago, already gave us a glimpse of quite how consolidated the work of the IPCC has become when it comes to the physical dimension of climate change. As you set out to complete the summary for policymakers on climate change impacts, vulnerability and adaptation, let me also say that we in UNEP continue to follow your work with the greatest interest. I'm often reminded that in the context of trying to help the world understand the consequences of global warming, it is sometimes like being in the evening in your home and watching the weather report. We may not fully understand all the factors that determine tomorrow's weather, but we take seriously the predictions of extreme weather events, how we should prepare for them, the mitigation of risks that we should consider, and also our ability to understand that in the absence of perfect scientific information, we do however make judgments on risks. It is quite clear today from Working Group 1 report, but also with all the other evidence that is emerging almost daily from scientific research and also from observing what is happening on our planet, that time is running out. Yes, climate change is a long-term challenge, but it requires urgent action. Through the work of Working Group 2, we begin to understand quite how serious the consequences are of not taking that long-term challenge with an urgent imperative of acting now. The costs of continuing to, in a sense, escalate the global warming phenomenon of locking ourselves into high carbon infrastructure, the prospects of ever greater reliance on unproven technologies to cope with global warming and the consequent actions of reversing it, and also our ability to try and understand the costs of mitigation that will be compressed in an ever shorter period of time if you are to stay within the two degree target are boggling, mind boggling indeed. In fact, in some ways, we are already seeing the dark clouds of climate change ahead, and yet the evidence from the emissions gap report and much of the work of the IPCC indicates that we are still putting the foot down on the pedal. We are accelerating carbon emissions. It is in this context that we must also realize that in a region such as Africa, and here in Kenya where UNIB is headquartered, the implications of adaptation on economies, on societies are already very significant today. In last year's Africa Adaptation Gap report, UNEP estimated that Africa is already having to expend between 7 to $15 billion a year in adaptation costs today. They are projected by 2050 to rise to $50 billion, almost half of the entire ODA budget of the world today. These are consequences and these are also impositions on societies that have had little to contribute in terms of the problem, but are bearing insurmountable costs when you look into the future. Our work on ecosystem-based adaptation is another example of how we must understand that the response to climate change is not only a challenge and a cost, it is also an opportunity. An opportunity to move towards a more inclusive green economy in which measures that may have an immediate benefit in terms of reducing emissions 
also translate into multiple benefits, be it in terms of public health, greater energy efficiency, greater energy security, a more efficient agriculture, and also an ability to invest in mitigation terms, but also achieve benefits in the adaptation and resilience capacity of societies. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the field and the connections between agriculture, forestry and climate change. Last year's Warsaw COP gave us a good signal that on the front of RED and RED+, Plus, we now are in a position to truly move forward as a global community. I urge you in your report to speak clearly to the world, and even when acknowledging that we may not be able with our models and scientific projections to answer all questions, it is our obligation, our duty to inform the world about the prospect and the risks that lie ahead of us. It is in the history of human nature and also of human societies that we have managed risks, that we have taken information, and particularly with the benefit of science today, we are able to make judgments about the future. It is time that as an international community, but also in every country, in every community, in every business, the challenge of climate change is understood both in terms of the enormous risks that it imposes already today, but even more so in the future on our societies and economies, but also about the enormous potential that we have with human ingenuity, with technology, with the right economic policies, and with taking science seriously for changing the future course of societies on planet Earth. From UNEP, we continue to extend our support to the work of the IPCC, and indeed we celebrate it 25 years into its existence, its contribution, both in terms of its work in the past, and also in terms of its future work, when you meet in a few weeks' time in Berlin, is of immense importance. On behalf of the United Nations Environment Programme, I wish you a very successful session in Japan, and may your voice be heard loud and clearly when you speak to the world in a few months' time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, I thank the Government of Japan for hosting this important meeting of Working Group 2 of the IPCC and what promises to be an exciting approval and acceptance plenary. I also thank all the scientists for the hard work it took to complete the second installment of the fifth assessment report on impacts, adaptation and vulnerability. This report, together with the contribution of Working Group 3, expected to be adopted in two weeks in Berlin, will complete the solution space that shines unprecedented light on how we can meet the climate change challenge. The assessment you have developed deepens understanding of the effects of climate change on physical, biological, and human-managed systems and is unparalleled in terms of its specificity and resolution in time and space. It is a step forward that integrates the problem shown in physical climate science from Worker Group 1 with solutions based in sound science. You are truly doing some great work. At the opening of this crucial plenary, I would like to make three points. Point one, your contribution to AR5 goes further towards meeting the needs of the convention and its parties than any report to date. Your efforts to assess risks and impacts for limiting global warming below the two degree limit or even 1.5 degrees provide the focus needed for effective policy response. Your assessments of the interplay between adaptation and mitigation open more options for parties to act in both the short term and the long term and underscore the reasons why immediate action with a forward view is needed. And while adaptation ultimately happens at local levels, your report presents a global picture of integrated risks across sectors and regions, showing how every local action fits into global response. Point two, your contribution to AR5 will inform the international process under the UNFCCC on several levels. At the upcoming session in June, key findings will be presented to parties at a special event to inform all negotiation streams. The Adaptation Committee will meet with the IPCC to identify practical areas where the committee can use the findings of your report. Your results will inform the structured expert dialogue set up in the context of the intergovernmental review of the progress in limiting warming and of the adequacy of the upper limit 
on acceptable warming currently set at 2 degrees centigrade. This involves both risk assessment and value judgment, and your report assessing risks across context and through time provides a basis for judging when the risk from climate change becomes significantly dangerous. In addition, key findings will inform two high-level ministerial dialogues aiding the highest level of decision making. Your report will infuse the climate talks with unbiased and objective information that allows for action that is in everyone's best interest. Point three, we know that the sum of ongoing efforts to limit warming do not add up to what is needed to bend the curve and mankind is not on track to limit warming to 2 degrees centigrade, let alone 1.5 degrees. For that reason, parties agreed to develop a new universal climate change agreement to be adopted in Paris in 2015. The Paris Agreement must be anchored in current reality, but also capable of transforming that reality. It must chart a viable global pathway out of a current danger zone. The effort to craft a meaningful agreement in Paris will gain momentum from the full picture of science, both on the problem and on the solutions. Working Group 2 findings are a major incentive for the international community to accelerate efforts to combat climate change. People in all areas of society need to take action. This action must come from government at all levels, civil society and individuals in a mutually reinforcing way. You are building the scientific foundation for a strong policy response in the ongoing efforts to design and reach convergence among governments on a new global climate agreement. And you are building this foundation at the best possible moment, when the world needs a foundation in place to build a robust and flexible framework for scaling up and speeding up the transition to low carbon social and economic development that defines the solution to climate change. I therefore wish you a successful meeting and look forward to collaborating with the IPCC to presenting your work in Bonn. Thank you. I'm <clears throat> conscious of the fact that His Excellency the Minister has to leave at 10.40. So what I would suggest is that one of the co-chairs of Working Group 2 make a statement now, and the second co-chair may have to do that once His Excellency the Minister has left at 10.40. Dear Minister Ishihara, Dr. Pachari, guests, colleagues, it's a profound pleasure for me to add my voice to those you've already heard, welcoming you here to this session to evaluate and hopefully approve the report of Working Group 2 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. As all of you know, the mandate of Working Group 2 is to assess current knowledge about impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability to climate change. It's a rich, diverse, multi-dimensional, important set of topics uh, supported by an amazing flowering of knowledge in recent years. I want to speak to a, a couple of themes that have emerged from the report, but before that I, I want to speak uh, to a different kind of impact, the impact that working on this report has had on the hundreds of scientists who've contributed to it. Uh, the odyssey that has resulted in the report we'll be considering this week began nearly five years ago in a meeting in Vienna, in Venice, I'm sorry, when uh, the outline was laid down. Uh, the outline was bold and ambitious, acknowledging the wide range of new information that was available about different sectors that are sensitive potentially to climate change. Some of these are geographic, the oceans are a major theme of this report. Others are, are rooted in a in expanding understanding of the way the climate challenge influences people. Uh, we've addressed topics as diverse as the way that climate can play a role in trapping people in poverty or helping lift them out of poverty. We've also considered topics as, as diverse as the links between climate change and security. Uh, this, this flowering of topics has really uh, created uh, opportunity to 
understand and incorporate under the appreciation of climate into a much broader range of topics than has been possible in the past. Uh, but it's also required a, a, a giant team, a team with over 300 authors that have worked diligently over a, a gigantic series of activities. Uh, being involved with my co-chair and the leadership of this scientific team has been one of the great privileges of my scientific career. Uh, the author team has been dedicated creative, wise with every interaction. I, I learn from them, I gain a new appreciation, a, a new way of looking at issues that I thought I already understood, or uh, a, a new understanding of the difficulties and the opportunities that we confront. Uh, I think everybody who works on the climate issue understands that climate change is truly one of the defining challenges of the 21st century. And there's no question that having the very best science available to inform policy is a, a unique opportunity, but it's also a unique responsibility. The, the journey that's been the development of the Working Group 2 report uh, really depends heavily on wonderful support we've had from Japan. Our, our work on the report really got underway at a meeting in early 2011 and hosted by the government of Japan in Scuba. Uh, we followed that with a meeting in late 2011 in, in San Francisco and then one in the in late 2012 in Buenos Aires and, and concluded our writing journey with a meeting in the middle of 2013 in, in Bled in Slovenia. And throughout this entire process, I've just been uh, awestruck at the dedication and, and work ethic of the author team as they, as they um, considered review comments from more than um, uh, 1,700 viewers processed more than 50,000 review comments in a process that involved writing, revising, revising, discussing, revising, rewriting, and rewriting again. It's really been a, a remarkable journey. Uh, the report itself is scientifically bold, and it's bold in two really important areas that I think are going to be transformative about the way we see the climate challenge. Uh, the first is the recognition that responding effectively to climate change is essentially a problem in managing risks. This opens two powerful approaches to dealing with the issue. Uh, one is the understanding that we need to be looking not only at the most likely outcomes of climate change, but at the full range of possibilities, including possibilities that aren't necessarily of very high probability, but are a profoundly important consequence. The other really critical opportunity that's created by thinking of climate change as a challenge in managing risks is that uh, individuals, firms, countries already deploy a, a wide range of tools effectively for managing risks. And positioning climate change as a challenge in managing risks allows us to take advantage of that broad set of tools. Uh, the second important inspirational theme of the Working Group 2 report is that although it focuses on a cold, analytical, and sometimes depressing view of the challenges we face. It also maps the opportunities that are intrinsic in the solution space, and it looks at ways we can combine adaptation, mitigation, transformation of society in an effort that can really help us build a world that's not only better prepared to deal with climate change, but is fundamentally a better world. Uh, for all of us who've been involved with the IPCC report, it's incredibly exciting to stand at the border between assessing the science and communicating it more broadly. You know, there are lots of organizations that do a fabulous job of, of communicating climate science. I think of those organizations as bells. Their job is to ring as loud and as clearly as possible with important messages. IPCC isn't like that. IPCC is more like a bell tower. It's a tower from which the world can get a clear vision and a long-range vision about the scientific dimensions of the climate problem and the dimensions of the possible solutions. Uh, let me close with a reminder that climate change really is one of the defining challenges of the 21st century, and the IPCC is uniquely positioned to allow policymakers, all the way from individuals to international organizations, to deal effectively, robustly, and optimistically with a challenging future. Thank you very much. Well, His Excellency the Minister has very graciously agreed to stay till the presentation by my colleague Vicente Barros, co-chair of Working Group 2. Um,
So thank you very much, Your Excellency. Presente. Thank you. Su Excelencia, Mr. Noburo Ishihara, Minister, Ministro de Ambiente de Japón. Señor Presidente del IPCC, Rajendra Pachauri. Señora Secretaria del IPCC, Renata Cris. Estimados colegas, señores delegados del panel. Al llegar a esta instancia final en la elaboración del quinto informe de evaluación del Grupo 2 del IPCC, como copresidente del grupo, solo me caben palabras de agradecimiento. En primer lugar, al Japón, su Ministerio de Ambiente y a la ciudad de Yokohama por su apoyo materializado en la magnífica organización de este evento y también en el de la primera reunión de autores que fue, tuvo lugar en Tsukuba hace tres años. De esta forma, iniciando y ahora cerrando las reuniones del grupo del IPCC, del grupo 2, para la evaluación del informe, Japón hace una singular contribución. Agradezco al panel y a los gobiernos que lo componen por las numerosas y valiosas comentarios y sugerencias hechas a lo largo del proceso de revisión, que, fue, que fueron en, un importante apoyo para mejorar la calidad de este informe. Al presidente del IPCC, profesor Rajendra Pachaure, y al personal de la Secretaría del IPCC, y en particular a la Secretaria General Renata Cris, por su continuo apoyo y colaboración. Muy especialmente, debemos agradecer a los autores de este informe, algunos de ellos aquí presentes, por su destino desinteresado y valioso aporte en un marco de excepcional cooperación durante numerosas horas de trabajo. Debo también resaltar la extraordinaria labor de la unidad técnica de apoyo tanto en los aspectos científicos como, este, como eh, logísticos. Primero liderados por Christy Evi y luego por David Oaken. Finalmente agradezco a Chris Phil su liderazgo, franqueza y apertura que nos permitió transitar adecuadamente este proceso, este complejo proceso. Tenemos por delante cinco días de intenso trabajo del que espero y deseo el mejor de los frutos. Muchas gracias. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, may I request you to remain seated as uh, His Excellency the Minister uh, departs, and I want to thank him once again for having spared his time to be with us and staying on till we completed this segment of uh, the opening session. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, my colleagues will also escort the media uh, out. So uh, please remain seated and uh, we'll resume our session in a few minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>